When you hear the word glory, what comes into your mind? It's a common enough word that we use in church, and, but I wonder if we ever take time to understand exactly what it's about. It's manifest in a variety of different ways, and fundamentally it's about the presence and the person and the activity of Almighty God. Of course, it can also be used in a sense of bringing glory to God, which is about praise. But I wonder what you think of, what comes to your mind when you think of the word glory. For some of you, your minds may go back to the great old hymn known as the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Glory, glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. For some of you, it may be a lot more passive in the way that we find in the 19th Psalm where the psalmist writes, the heavens declare the glory of God. They, they show forth, they manifest the glory of God. But let me ask the question again. What do you think of? When you think of the word glory. I want to take you to a situation this morning where the glory of God is seen in a different way, a way that perhaps you've never thought of before. I want you to come with me back in time 2,000 years ago to a village in Galilee called Nazareth. There we find a, a young woman named Mary probably going about her ongoing daily task when her daily routine is interrupted, and interrupted in a way that she could never have imagined. Luke tells us about this in the first chapter of his Gospel. He speaks about Mary, and then he says that the angel Gabriel, sent by God, appeared to Mary. Now this is the same angel Gabriel that we find appearing to Zechariah just a few verses before. And Mary's response always not puzzles me, but intrigues me because I'm not sure if I could have been as calm as Mary was in the face of the appearance of the angel Gabriel, whom Luke tells us is the one who stands in the presence of God. But Gabriel came with a particular message for Mary. He told her that she had found favour with God. In other words, that God was about to bless her and bestow his favour upon her, that she was going to conceive and she was going to bring forth a son and his name was to be called Jesus. Mary's response to that, I think, is very calm and measured. And she just wanted to know the answer basically to one question. She said, but how is this going to happen since I'm a virgin? Gabriel, with patience, a patience that comes from being in the presence of God, graciously answered her question and said that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and that which you conceive will be conceived by the Holy Spirit. It would be a miracle never had happened in the whole history of humankind before and would never happen again. And what was Mary's response? Very simple. She said to Gabriel, so let it be then to me as you have said. And in that statement, God is glorified. There is glory in that statement, in that willingness of this young peasant woman to surrender her life her future, her reputation, her social standing into the hands of God brings honour and glory to Almighty God. And I guess my question to me and to all of us this Advent is, are we willing? Whatever God calls us to, or even if it's extraordinary, or perhaps it might just be the ordinary, go and speak to your neighbour, go and talk to your neighbour, go and do an act of kindness as we've been doing all through this Advent season. To your neighbour if your first reaction is, I can't possibly do that, or if it's, yes Lord, whatever it is you ask me to do, that is what I'll do. That's my prayer for me this Advent season. It's my prayer for all of us that we will be willing to put ourselves, surrender ourselves, submit ourselves to the will and to the purpose of God. Mary did that and we all know what the outcome was. Her son was born, he was called Jesus. He is our Lord and he is our only saviour. I want to take you back, if I may, to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. One of the verses really intrigues me, captures me and fires me up. It says this, He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Beloved in Christ, our God is marching on this Advent and will continue to march on. 
Are we those who are willing to march on with him and bring honour and glory to his name? I pray that that would be the case for you and for me and for everyone who may come across this little piece and listen to it. Let's pray. God Almighty, we thank you that we are able to be those who bring honour and glory to your name through the simple act of obedience, through surrendering to your will and purpose, that you might work in us and through us for the glory of your name. Fill us with a sense of excitement this Advent, Lord. Not the excitement that, that builds up to Christmas with the presents, or even the excitement that necessarily builds up to carol services and, and worship on Christmas Day, but the excitement that comes from knowing that in your hands we are able to make a difference in this season and in every season. So let it be, Lord, in our lives, for your honour and for your glory. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you richly.